Welcome to saving and serializing a data frame. The first thing we want to do in this lecture, apart from obviously importing pandas and numpy, is to just create a mock data frame to save out. So let's just create a new data frame here, directly from pandas, data frame, and we'll just pull some random numbers. We won't try and make this special at all. Right, fantastic. So we have a whole bunch of numbers here, 100,000 numbers, four columns, A, B, C, and D, all very easy to understand. The most common way of saving this data out is probably as you expect. We can go df.2 underscore CSV. We just put in a file name, so save.csv, because we're being nice and boring. And you can just run this, right? That's fine. However, if I open that file and drag it in, you can see that we've got us here an index that doesn't really mean anything. It's just taking up space. There's no information in here because it was just the auto assigned index. And you can see there are way too many significant digits. I don't care about all of those and you probably shouldn't either. So we can fix all of this very quickly just by tweaking this. We can just say index equals false. And then we can say float format, float format, format is equal to, and then just pass in some formatting string. In our case, percent sign 0.f4. So this means four digits after the zero point, and the, the percent %f just means, as you guess, a float. If I save that and then uh, reload this file, you can see coming in here that it is all very nice to look at now. All right, let's get rid of that and talk about a different method. So another one that I've talked about is pickling. As you might guess, two underscore pickle, and you just go save dot pickle, you run that and it's done. But look at the difference in time to save out pickles versus CSVs. 0.8 seconds for CSV and 13 milliseconds for a pickle. So they're fast, they can just break a lot easier. As you've probably guessed by now, if we just go df.2 underscore and then it's button mash tab, you'll see there's a whole bunch of ways that we can save these things out. A lot of them uh, you might never use, and that's completely fine. I essentially just use 2CSV and 2Pickle, but there are some other ones that you might want. In uh, Big Data, I know one of the more popular formats is HDF files. So HDF means hierarchical data format. There are two standards, HDF4, HDF5. Generally, you're using HDF5, and they're useful because, as the name implies, hierarchical data. You can put some complex objects inside these HDF5 files, and they handle them perfectly well. Obviously creating them is super simple to HDF and then just save uh, HDF. Uh, that's fine. You, you can you can put a five in there if you want. You don't have to. Uh, but we want to say that the key is the data. We're saving out the data. And the format for this one is just a table, right? It's, it's a 2D bit of data. So this is the format we can use. And it'll take a little while to save, but it'll load uh, quite quickly. You'll note that if you've tried to do this, it may have failed on your machine. And that's because HDF... Uh, at least when you're specifying this this table format here, does require you to have table installed. That's a Python package, so you would, if you have any issue, pip install tables right here. There's another method called, uh, well, there's another data structure called feather. Uh, that would require you to do something like pip install feather, I think it's feather format. Yes, yes it is. And in that case, if you wanted to save it, you'd go df to feather and then save dot that's the normal extension, FTH for Feather. You see that, that works. Uh, Feather's quite nice. Uh, there's a bunch of similar ones. It's quite speedy. Uh, I generally don't use it that much because like I said, I don't care that things take a little bit longer to save out to CSV or to load in because the data is human readable. And I'm generally, you know, at least when I'm making this course and teaching this course, you see I'm using CSV because the data files aren't gigabytes. You guys have to be able to download and use them quickly. So it doesn't really matter. For, for my context, it might matter for you, in which case uh, delve into all these different options, figure out what works best for you and run with it. Don't be constrained just to use anything simply because I'm using it. So I should point out that the numbers you see here are execution, oh, I just removed that one. The numbers you see are execution time. So I have the execution time extension for Jupyter Notebooks installed. If you also want that, uh, you can simply go to uh, this link here uh, or just Google uh, execute time Jupyter Notebooks extension. There's a whole pack of extensions that come with this NB extensions thing. So, you know, it's not just it by itself. There's code completion and other fun things that you can install if you wanted, but give that a look if you're wanting to get these execution times. Note that I've customized my plugin, so yours will look a little bit different if you install it. The times will probably go underneath, uh, but don't worry too much about those little details. If you want to customize it, well then, like I said, see after the conclusion, I'll show you how I've customized everything.
Another thing that we should point out is that all the tests so far have been running on purely numeric data. That's not exactly a fair comparison because some of the different methods uh, have benefits when you're not working with numeric data. So I'm going to paste in something here, Whoops. press M to turn that to markdown. Uh, we're going to pull some data, some astronaut data from Kaggle. You can go to that link or it'll be part of the zip file that you can download for this. And we're going to load that data in and then save it out in different file formats and you can see the performance difference and I'll pull up the file sizes so you can see the file size difference as well. All right, let's load this data in using good old read CSV. It should be under astronauts. Let's just have a look at the top five rows. You can see it's a nice mix between numbers, strings, and uh, you know, many other columns. So fantastic. Let's now save all of this out in different formats. In fact, to try and do this, let's save them out, but also load them back in. So I'm just going to copy and paste to speed up this section. We'll save out to CSV, index false, float format, just as it was before. And you can see it works pretty quickly. If we then read CSV, that's fine. It also works pretty quickly. There's not much data in here. Again, we can save something to pickle and then come over here and we can just read it in as a pickle. You notice it is faster than CSV. Uh, again, like I said, the, the trade-off there is it might break. We can save to HDF. You notice that takes a little bit longer. That's fine when you read in HDF. Uh, oh, this one's actually taking a fair amount of time to read in. That was unexpected. You'll notice too, if you rerun these multiple times, they generally get a little bit faster after the first execution. That's that's fine. That's normal. Uh, you know, the, the code's being cached. It's hitting various, you know, code speeds up if you continually execute the same thing over and over again. We can work with Feather. We can then load in Feather. And we could essentially run all of these tests with just two underscore and things like Excel, right? Hello, or I guess I should go save.excel or what's what's the format? XLS? It's been so long since I've used that. We can run that and oh no, you need to have XLWT installed. So I need to pip install that to get that to work. You notice that not everything works out of the box, but it is pretty easy to just pip install whatever you need. All right, let's quickly have a look at how much disk space each of these different methods here is using. So if I go percent, that's the signal for IPython that I'm doing a magic command and type in ls, that will just essentially run ls, or on Windows this would be dir, on the current directory that I'm in. You can come down here, you can see the notebooks from the lectures we've currently gone through, the astronauts data, the heart data, and then all these different save files. Uh, so let's see, save CSV is 87 kilobytes, feather is 107, the pickle is 90, and then HDF is 4 megabytes. Wow! Now don't actually be too alarmed by this. HDF is a very complex data structure and especially we've done it as a data table format and that means that the HDF is trying to make sure the table can grow when it has empty space so it's allocated over the top and don't worry too much about it. Uh, for these sort of data structures, as I was saying before, you can see it's really hard to go wrong with CSV or if you're just working on something temporarily with a pickle. Uh, my personal opinion, other people's may differ. I generally only use HDF when I get data in HDF. So I've had a whole bunch of deep learning projects where those are the database files that they create that I would load in. You know, don't get too caught up on this. You know, everything works, whether you have to spend a little bit of more time loading in, saving out or more time on your disk, that's fine, right? Not a big issue. And that's sort of the recap that I wanted to make. So let me just paste in a text version of that so you can read it if you download these notebooks. So HDF5 was the largest, don't worry about it. Um, lots of options, but uh, don't get hung up. And on the topic of not getting caught up on things that really don't matter that much, let's jump straight into the next lecture. It's all about inspecting data, so being able to see what's in your data, whether you have null values, the different types of different columns, everything that you need to know to get a perfect glance of your data in one or two lines of code.